1901, the frontier of America was here in the West. And James Cash Penny saw an opportunity to clothe the miners, the ranchers, and, and the cowboys at the time. He started a business right here in Kemmer, Wyoming. Check it out on your long way home. J.C. Penny, he had a, a full name. What's his full name? James Cash Penny. So, Kemmer, Wyoming, the first place for a J.C. Penny store, and really the birthplace of the department store. Uh, why Kemmer, Wyoming? Actually, when Mr. Penny started the Golden Rule, which was the first store, he uh, came from Evanston, and he had bought into partnership with um, a couple of men in Evanston and he was asked to go to Ogden, Utah, actually. And he didn't think that would be the right place because it was too populated. So he decided for Kimmer. So we're here at, at the mother store. Why do they call this the mother store of J.C. Penny? This is the mother store because this is where Mr. Penny uh, first opened up. His two partners sold up, he bought them out. And that's when the golden rule name changed to J.C. Penny. And by the time he moved into here, it was the first J.C. Penney store. At the time, there was mining and, and other things, is that correct? Yes. He actually was able to bring products in for cheaper than the um, company stores that the miners had here for the mines. A lot of the miners, because they were cut back in hours and stuff like that, they had to go to where they could get it a little cheaper. And they truly did owe their souls to the company stores, if you know the song, 16 tons, so. 16 tons, and what do you get? One day Another older day and older deeper in deep debt. debt. Yeah. Right. <laughs> do visitors come and, and they have no idea this is the first J.C. Penney store? A lot of people don't. A lot of people see the sign as they're driving by, and so they swing by and see it. And others, they go out of their way to come here. They'll make a two hour detour to come and see us. It really is the birthplace of the department store. It is, and we are a small mining town, dwindling in numbers. You would never think that something so big would start here. This is a picture of the first penny store. This is the first location. We don't know exactly where on Pine Street. And then the second location is this picture right here. This is the building right here across the street, and then this is the building right next door. And then the third location we have right there. So. Tell us about this picture. This is the first lady salesman, or salesperson, in any store. Most of them are men. And so Mr. Penny hired a woman to uh, work in the store. And then Mr. Penny, he was actually the first person to give credit to women. So really ahead of his time for many things. Yes, definitely, uh, definitely. I and Mr. Penny treated everyone as if they were long lost friends and knew everybody locally by their name and you know was was a great friend to everyone i noticed some unique items up on the on the side at pays to shop yes. at jc penny and so on but the most unique thing is this contraption that you've got here so will you will you walk over and tell us a little bit about it, yeah. about it. Um, mr penny did not trust us as associates with money okay. on the floor so he had two people up there that he trusted only. And so he used this machine, which was more out in the middle of the store. It ran to all the departments, ran clear across the store. This clips off. You can attach the bills or the receipt, and coins can go in there. So, so there was always somebody up in the upper level? Yes, then. two from what I understand. Okay. And it just switches back in there. And then, yeah, you give the rope a pull, and it would zing all the way up. We don't give it a full pull because uh, then we have to go up and send it back down. I'd argue maybe it was a little bit more than he didn't trust, but rather protected the at the same time. Issue. Right? Yes, yes, it could be. He right. was never robbed. Exactly my Which point. Which he never came. 
Walmart and Disney and other places all started right here where he came up with the ideas right here in Kemmer. Talk to us about the Penny idea and the seven principles therein. Um, he wanted to serve the public and do a good golden rule. And so he wanted fair compensation. He was fair and he was cash on the barrel head. Everybody had to pay cash and the company stores, it was credit and they paid higher prices for the credit. Eventually they, they started training their managers and the managers actually bought into ownership as he had done with the golden rule originally. Through the organization they participated in the business products and always have the human factor in the business and then test every policy. I think that's great. I mean principle is seven there to test every are every policy method and act in this wise. Does it square with what is right and just? I think that's probably good advice for our lives, don't you think? Yes, it is. If you haven't been to Kemmer before, um, what advice would you have for someone that maybe wanted to stop by and see the birthplace of the department store? Definitely come in and see it. It is unique. I mean, you'll get a few people that say they remember the store, but others, they've never seen anything like it. They're used to the big department stores. We are small. We don't carry everything. But yeah, definitely come and see it. We have his original house that's open as a museum, so that adds to it. Mr. Penny and Mrs. Penny, when they were building their home, their furnishings were actually the packing crates. So she has used the packing crates to make this back porch. And so the packing crates were very integral in, in, in doing this. And right here above the door, we have uh, one of the shipping crates, Johnson, Callahan, and Penny. And a lot of people think J.C. Penny, Johnson, Callahan, Penny. No, his name was James Cash. Isn't that great that it still exists and it's still there? That's really A lot cool. of history with that. Absolutely. Well, certainly an icon of his time. This is evidence of how frugal he was. And I, I think that's another lesson in life, too, is to make sure that, that you're doing great things in a prudent way. And he certainly led the way. Yes, he did. They used everything, you know, the uh, axiom, I guess is what they call it. Uh, use it up, wear it out. Legend says the hole in the floor is where Mr. Penny would hide his money. But I was talking to a gentleman from England and he says, right by the chimney, I think it would get a little too warm. <laughs> if that is uh, where he actually kept his money, it would be a little warm and you'd have to use some hot pads or something to get it out. But um, Somebody said, I think it was probably used to heat rocks oh, or so. bricks because, you know, warm your bed because there's no heat through the house other than the heat through the chimney and what it radiates out. So we're not exactly sure, but legend has it. He put his money down in there. Well, and one of the things that I that I wanted to talk about is this is an old-fashioned bed. You can see that it's held up by ropes. And on the other side, you could crank those up and make them tighter. And so that's where the phrase come, sleep tight. I think it's admirable that folks like you and the organization that you're, that you're working with preserve such great American history. Again, this is the birthplace of the department store. And it's really cool to come in and see where where things came from. and and the philosophies that help to build America right here in this little house, and it's a lot of fun. It is, it's wonderful to be able to do this. It's a privilege for me. What a, a great opportunity to learn a little bit more about an American icon, J.C. Penney, where he created the principles that really set the cadence for department stores across the world. It's worth your time to take the long way home and check it out right here in Cameron, Wyoming.